Our next guest has hosted uh, a terrific power showcase. In fact, it's called the Power Showcase. Going on, uh, what, 15? This is year 16. Yeah, and of the this power is an showcase. annual visit for us. What's this, year five for at, us? At least, at least. We, uh, <clears throat> we're me. pleased to have Brian Domenico on with us once again uh, talking about the Power Showcase. Brian, good morning. Harold, Matt, as always, it's really nice to see you, and I appreciate you having me on. Well, we appreciate you coming on with us to kind of uh, yeah. introduce our viewership to some of the kids that you've discovered and showcased in your Power Showcase. I mean, boy, the list is unbelievable. We watch the video of this thing all the time. Um, among the players that you had, and I, I guess you could talk on all of them, who, who's made your eyes pop the most at the Power Showcase? Well, as far as as far as this year, I mean, it's, it is it is tough because this was a year where there wasn't like that big, big human interest story of like the 525 foot home run or something along those lines. But there is a player by the name of Hogan Nelson uh, who has, has attended five power showcase events and he's actually a three time power showcase champion and won it as a 13 year old and a 14 year old. And then last year had to make a really big decision. He's one of the top uh, quarterbacks in the state of Texas and decided last year after having a really good showing at area code to kind of shift gears and focus strictly on on baseball and he came back as an underclassman and in one in dramatic fashion and and he is one of those those individuals that you have that has the it factor when the pressure mounts the most and his back's against the wall somehow some way he 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 comes and and he ends up pulling through and winning and it's that's one of those unique dna things that i think scouts and college coaches look for hey brian i think we're in a unique time too where guys have have perfected the home run and do you see that early on the art form of guys really knowing to master their swing for homers at an earlier you know, age than before yeah, I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. The old adage back in the day would be that home run derbies would ruin a player's swing. And, I, and I'd be like, that, that's that's not really true because there's so many different swings that are applied in an at-bat, whether it's an 0-2 count or you have to hit and run or move a guy over or have to purposely hit a fly ball to the outfield for a guy and got a tag from whatever base. So I think that when you also put in the very beginning when they're 12, 12 years old and at Cooperstown, you know, Cooperstown has those 200-foot fences, so the kids are enjoying that. Then they go to the Hall of Fame, and the nostalgia of looking at Babe Ruth's bat and a lot of the the old uniforms. Now, they're too young to really appreciate all that, but it kind of starts there. And then they come to the Power Showcase, and knowing that they're coming to the Power Showcase and ending up at the other end of the rainbow in a major league stadium to kind of be a big leaguer and, ha and wet their palate for greatness and have that prosperous energy wash over them. Now it trickles back to, okay, how are we going to prepare for this? And with how all the great metrics today with blast motion and, and hit tracks and all how, how and rap Soto and how their videos can be broken down and how all of the uh, hitting coaches are vast in so many different philosophies that they break down the kids swings and they really start to learn how to do that. Now you can attest to this Harold that when you when you hit a ball and you square one up it's smooth. It's one of the most beautiful moments in all of baseball and obviously you have to elevate to celebrate. Elevate to celebrate. I love him. That's a good Gary line. Gary Templeton good, couldn't have said it better himself. That's a good line. Hey uh, so how do I get invited if I'm a kid and how's that process work to get there? If Matt wants to be a 13 year old again. How's he get into this deal? Yeah, and, and that's a great question. And there's a lot of different ways that you can you can get in. Um, some parents will reach out to me. Obviously, I, I need to take a look at some video. Then I want to take a look and see what travelable organization they play for, the level of competition. And and listen, I don't always bring in the absolute very, very, very best guys. There are some big, big lumbering young players that they just need to set some goals and it's only a matter of time before the kinetics and everything starts to come together and they find themselves and they take off so again parents can reach out through the website and again there's a lot of different ways Harold hey so give us some uh, some names of some players either prospects in in minor league ball or big leaguers who've come through the power showcase well, I think the most noticeable one was was Bryce Harper, you know, obviously. And then you had, you know, Tristan Costas, who's now the starting first baseman for the Boston Red Sox. And when he did the power showcase, he hit five 500-foot home runs, which was 
really incredible. <laughs> and, then, and then it was, right. And then it was blaze Jordan that you and I had, had oh, talked yeah. about many, many times. And then he won the junior major league home run derby. There was a young man by the name of David Denson that hit a 515 foot home run off the jumbotron. That was back in 2012. I had Daniel Vogel back. I mean, there's, 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 there's countless guys in the big leagues. Tell us about this DiMaggio <laughs> Lonero. Oh, DiMaggio <laughs> Lonero, leaving nothing to the imagination. <laughs> a very, very cool story. So um, his his grandfather was an Italian immigrant. And so when he got to New York, just fell in love with baseball and obviously the New York Yankees. And when he had Whoa. his son, which is DiMaggio's uh, father, his name was Bill. When Bill grew up, he obviously was a diehard Yankee fan. So he decided to name his son DiMaggio. And his father was like, well, listen, that's kind of a tough name to live up to. And what's ironic is that uh, DiMaggio actually told his father, and he knew about the event because two of his buddies did the event a couple of years ago, a player named Drew Pepe, who actually was a two-time power showcase world champion. He told his father, he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to go down and I'm going to win it. And, and I, I think he, you know, he put out some incredible numbers, 468 feet with his longest home run. Um, and he has tremendous raw power. And like I said earlier, just scratching the surface and his potential. And I think he did Joe DiMaggio pretty proud for sure. Yeah, I would these say these so. kids are breaking my back looking at these videos. You like videos. Italians, baby? You like Italians. I, I understand they also <laughs> named the family dog Yogi. They Is did. that right? <laughs> Man, That's right. Living a Yankee yeah. dream there. Yeah. I want to ask you about it because you, there, uh, there's a, tw a couple of 12U and 13U kids that popped as well. And I don't know, for me, the, the younger they get with the power, I mean, that just, it makes you marvel at the, at the, the command and the bat to ball skills when the kid's 12 years old. It, great point. I, I think that some kids gravitate towards enhancing their baseball DNA and looking for that next big stage to have to compete upon. Like IJ Garza, you just saw, that's Tyler Cerruti. Uh, that's uh, 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 Sebastian Carface, you know, who actually won it, actually won the week nine's home run derby in Cooperstown. Uh, Austin Brown, who is a 14 year old Harold and Matt that hit a 479 foot home run. Um, that, that, that Here it is right here. He hits it and it goes off the back of the Lone Depot. Oh my gosh, oh, check this slow. out. Looks like Corey Hart. Beautiful, easy swing. Yep. Beautiful, easy swing. Oh, man, it's unbelievable. That is Talent. amazing. Now, man, now amazing. One, one more guy, if I can, one more guy, if I can here, um, is a six foot eight, six foot eight power hitter from Tennessee named Braden Turnage. And, and I How did a little research. He? I think he's 16 or 17 years old. Six, eight. And, and, and I did a little did a little digging, and I wanted to find out, okay, who who in today's game, position player-wise, are the top guys as far as height? You had O'Neill Cruz, the shortstop with the Pirates, and then you have Aaron Judge, who plays outfield. But I wanted to dig a little deeper and find out who was the tallest major leaguer to ever play first base, and it was Tony Clark. You know, I guess he's the executive director of the Major League Baseball yeah. Players Association, had 251 home runs and, and a 15-year career. But, yeah, I mean, six foot eight, and he's uh, an incredible basketball player, and he's also an ascending pitcher on the mound. Wow. wow. That's scary. He, he looked like Richie Sexton. Six, yeah, yeah, that's a good – I thought he looked like yeah. George Murison. Yeah, that's a good team. NBA player. Hey, Brian, we appreciate wow. the visit as always. Congrats on another successful run on the Power Showcase. I know that kids love participating in your event. Uh, you had it a few weeks ago, and for folks that are interested, it's on the website. We have the information on the screen. Brian, we appreciate the visit. Happy holidays to you and your family. Always. Thanks, guys.
name is Nick Presto, scout with Kansas City Royals. Um, it's a great opportunity. Appreciate you guys being here. Uh, hitting on a big league field, taking. We're gonna run you through a scout day. You know, as scouts, we're looking. We're looking for a bunch of things to see if you want. If you're gonna be a professional player. I mean, obviously, we're looking for hitting. We're looking for power. We're looking for running. Arm strength and fielding. Those are the five tools that we're looking for. All this stuff's important if you want to play this game. Representing Maryland, a shortstop out of the Rockville School, Asher Friedman.
League has a 2-0 lead in the top of the first inning against Dylan England from North Carolina. Ball slammed to the shortstop. Gets the first out and the second out. 6-4-3, twin killing. The ball's hammered to the shortstop and past the shortstop. It's going to score one run. And they just trade places. Good job by Asher Friedman from Maryland to cash in a run. As Strand grounds that to the shortstop, makes a great play to take care of William Strand from Arizona. Ground ball out by the shortstop. And Brian Delmenico says great play to the shortstop from Maryland. 